some girlfriend rang up and said, you've got to hear this guy, Jimi Hendrix. And I went, oh, really? She said, yeah, I was at a club last night. It's unbelievable. And I went, oh, thanks. That's all you want to hear first thing in the morning, isn't it? <laughs> Someone's outrageous guitar playing. So I went along to see Hendrix at Blazes. It was unbelievable. Great. And I just went away from there thinking I'd better think of something else to do. <laughs> I followed him around a bit, and uh, he'd heard of me, which is, I couldn't believe, you know, and he said, what's that let you play in t Happenings 10 years' time ago? I, you know, he said, I swiped that on this, and I, I, I thought, wait a minute, this is really incredible. This is kind of like we could talk music now, not instead of like he's an immovable force, I can actually get some inspiration. And uh, he was a great source of inspiration. The fact that he was doing things so upfront and so wild and un unchained. I've never met him. I heard he was pretty wild and uh, he was eating this uh, fried chicken <laughs> through the box and he didn't take it out, he just chewed the bottom of the box and let the chicken through that. It's really funny. We're trying to contact Stevie and say, look, we've got to rehearse. And he said, oh, you rehearse, do you? <laughs> he said, what the hell do you want to rehearse for? I said, well, it might be just a prudent sort of idea, you know, suggestion to get, you know, maybe the key or something to all about finish them. <laughs> single sentence question. You've got to try and answer it with a single sentence answer. We've talked about collaborations. A single artist you're yet to actually perform with. Um, well, I love Prince. I mean, I always thought that that would be a pretty tasty sort of partnership. Did you not nearly join the role? I nearly joined, yeah, I was a stone for about two days. <laughs> so, so, that, so did you have to audition? I mean, I read you. Yeah. I mean, just seriely, they asked no, you to no, audition. I, I tell you what happened. I got a call, a very sort of dodgy call from my manager saying the Stones would love you to go to, to Amsterdam uh, or Rotterdam and do a couple of tracks with them. And I thought, OK. So finally we played and um, I said, what are all these guitars doing in, in the lobby? There's thousands of guitars with different names and they're not Keith's. They said, well, we were auditioning for a, a replacement. And um, when you agreed to come, we, we stopped them from coming. I said, so I'm in the Stones. He said, well, of course you are. But I couldn't. I mean, I just, the way their lifestyle was, I mean, much as I'd like to join the Stones, I, I couldn't do that pace. Well, I was going to say, do you regret not taking that gig? So you're a, a Stone in um, effect for, a, to, for two days. It's too slow. I, I, I couldn't just have enjoyed any length of career with just playing three chords, you know. I mean, three chord wonders is what Ian Stewart used to call them affectionately and respectfully, but they, they didn't do anything too challenging. I, um, I can't believe this. I just, you know, you people, but on top of this, I'd like to welcome to the stage somebody who knows their way around a Stratocaster. Um, Mr. Eric Clapton is here tonight. <laughs> I may as well fuck off, only. Les Paul thing. Yeah. Remember the Les Paul thing? Shep had it. That's oh, when yeah, you first yeah. uh, met Les Paul on the thing. Yeah. What an amazing night that was. Yeah, that's just pretty amazing. Les Paul, I mean, you know, maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah. He was your one of your biggest influences. He was, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you know, first of all, joining the Arbors and, and getting press attention was amazing. But I just remember thinking, who was it that inspired me, first of all, and it had to be Les. Yeah. He was the first guy that came out with a fast 
very trebly sounding guitar with a slap echo in a yeah. 49 or something, you know. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Before you start claiming it in 1966 or something like that, he was around 25 years earlier. Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and Keith Moon on drums. And that, back to Bolero, that's it. That was done that day, uh, in one day rather, and uh, together with about three other tracks, mixed in the next day. And I said, look, that was great fun, why don't we just leave it like that? You know, why don't we just go on the road? And of course, Mooney couldn't, because he, his contract with The Who was still there, but I think given half a chance, he would have done. And, uh, Paige was certainly in interested. We both were sort of bold bass and, you know, nice funky grooves and stuff, and uh, a lot of weird guitar sound. That's exactly what I was doing at the time, trying to do with Rod. Um, this geezer here. <laughs> no, we were both twisted, you know, at birth, I think, you know, we, we pursued rock and roll in lieu of uh, mathematics. <laughs> You know, that's about it. There was no brainer, really. Um, I was taken over by rock and roll in the 50s.